Why don't we bring in CTV's Los Angeles bureau chief, Tom Walters, who's also been listening in on this. So, Tom, let's start with the Steve Bannon comments and what he basically said about him and what he's accused of doing. Well, Steve Bannon is accused of ripping off a charity, in effect. Um, the uh, organization called We Build the Wall was set up to be a kind of private donors exercise in supporting the goals of President Trump to build a wall along the southern border. The plan was uh, three miles of fence posts in the El Paso area, um, and $25 million worth of donations were raised from people who wanted to support that project. Well, donors were assured along the way that 100% of their money would go toward this cause. Um, not so. Uh, it's um, thought, according to, uh, according to this 24-page uh, indictment, uh, um, that uh, saw a grand jury hand down uh, charges of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and money laundering, uh, that um, Steve Bannon enriched himself to the tune of about a million dollars, and uh, that the money was not just misappropriated, not just and not just sort of accidentally misplaced, but that there was a very calculated conspiracy here to misappropriate the funds involving things like phony invoices, very deliberate, um, uh, you know, active acts in order to perpetrate this fraud. Okay, so let me ask you this. I mean, here's the latest senior advisor to be accused of criminal behavior. I mean, there's a long list, not the least of which was the former or original, I guess, national security advisor. How bad will this be? How will this play out on the campaign trail? And, and does Trump wear this? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, Trump has distanced himself from this particular group and has uh, certainly underscored that distancing today, trying to say that it's got nothing to do with him, never mind that these are people who support him and support a particular cause that he identified, uh, building a southern border wall. Um, will it affect him very much? Probably not, because, um, uh, you know, so much of this is already sort of baked into the pie. Uh, the associations that the Trump administration has with people who have been accused of criminal behavior is, a, you know, is a long, deep uh, series of connections. Uh, I think Bannon is probably um, the ninth, uh, I would think the, the ninth at least, um, top associate or official of the administration to be uh, criminally charged. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think Donald Trump's supporters are, are at least as likely to look at this as being in some way a sort of malicious prosecution by prosecutors out to get the president. Never mind that the indictment was not handed down by, you know, by prosecutors directly. It's, it's, the, it's the conclusion of a grand jury. But, um, uh, you know, but, I, but I'm not sure that it's that it's going to have a great impact on Donald Trump's support. Okay, so what impact will this have? Because it was a bit of a loss for Trump today, learning that um, he has lost his bid yet again to fight a subpoena to force him to hand over his tax returns. Um, and, he, and he also commented about that today. Yeah, I mean, he calls this part of the uh, part of the witch hunt, and uh, you know, says that this is a uh, again. He's sort of painting this as some kind of malicious act. That prosecutors are are looking for, you know, some comma that uh, wasn't put in the right place by a lawyer, and some, um, you know, some T that was not correctly uh, crossed. So, uh, what's going on here is that the Southern District of New York is investigating uh, possible fraud by the Trump Organization and um, fraud or financial misconduct, and that it's in that context that eight years of Donald Trump's uh, tax records have been subpoenaed. Now, remember, these are records he once said he would happily provide once he was no longer under some IRS audit. Um, you know, these are things he once promised to make public. But uh, he's now fighting tooth and nail to prevent any kind of public release of these uh, things, or specifically release to prosecutors in New York. And um, that process is likely to continue for a little while. He's expected to, to appeal this latest ruling through whatever mechanism is available to still do so. Okay, Tom, before I let you go, I have to ask you about this. I mean, the, the, the DNC, the DNC. so um, a pretty powerful speech from Barack Obama, a historical speech from Kamala Harris. But tonight, Joe Biden, what will you be watching for? What does he need to do? I think there are a couple of things Joe Biden needs to do tonight. Um, 
politically, I, I don't think he needs to reassure people anymore of, of sort of goodwill and, um, you know, empathy, compassion, um, love of family. Those things have really been underscored at every turn at the Democratic National Convention. What I think he needs to do politically is reach out to some of those voters who were disaffected, um, uh, who Hillary Clinton may have alienated in the 2016 election, but who could still be brought back to the Democratic Party. And I'm talking now specifically about uh, sort of unionized coal workers in Pennsylvania, West Virginia. I uh, spent some time there in the 2016 campaign, and that's traditional Democrat country. But uh, some of those people, a lot of those people, uh, turned to Donald Trump. So I think, I think um, Biden's got to be able to translate uh, his message to some of those people. But I think he also really, the, the, the most important thing probably for him to do tonight is simply to look sharp. Um, you know, there are going to be questions and there have been questions about his age and uh, he needs to look um, completely fit and ready for the job. Tom, always great to talk to you. Tom Walters, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Bev.